Hi, I'm Mark Spencer, President of Water Analytics, and I'd like to welcome you back to another instrumentation training video. In this video, we'll pick up where we left off in the previous one on calibrating a pH probe. First, let's talk about that efficiency rating I mentioned in the video. Remember that when we finished calibrating our probe, the Shark Controller reported back an efficiency rating. I told you that no probe leaves the factory with an efficiency of less than 90% and that 80% is a value at which you ought to do some simple maintenance. Well, let's go into this a little deeper. A pH probe is nothing more than a little battery, a very weak one at that, and it generates a voltage that is created by hydrogen ions that pH measures. It's a simple law of nature that for every unit decrease of pH, the voltage of the probe increases by about 59 millivolts at room temperature. This is often referred to as the slope of the probe. Want to look like an expert? Just remember that number, which I repeat, 59 millivolts per unit change in pH. If you're so inclined, you can learn how that number came to be by going to Google and looking up the Nernst equation. By the way, you also see that 59 millivolts for an ORP probe for the same reason. The Nernst equation also tells you how voltage changes when the temperature changes. So what this means, if I take my pH probe and it's reading pH 7 in one sample and I put in another sample that reads pH 6, my probe ought to respond by increasing the voltage by 59 millivolts. To take this one step further, I'll take my pH probe that is in pH 7 calibration solution and put it in pH 4 solution. In that case, the pH changes by 3 units and the voltage output of my probe should increase by 3 times 59 millivolts or 177 millivolts. If I actually do the experiment and I record a change of 160 millivolts, then I know that the probe is not acting ideally. We say that its efficiency is 160 divided by 177, or 90 percent efficient. Any probe with any efficiency greater than zero will work, and it will give you an accurate reading. But accuracy is not the same as precision. And to get precision better than 0.1 pH units, a pH probe should be at least 70% efficient. Now that you're an expert, because you know the magic 59 millivolt rule, I'd like to show you how to look like a master by looking, so shall we say, under the hood of a probe. It's simple, and it will do more than just impress your colleagues and customers. It will tell you why your probe may be in need of a little TLC. To look under the hood, we only need use the inside menu of our shark to bring up our diagnostics menu. Let's do that right now. We're going to flip down the cover and cycle through the available menus. Okay. The fourth menu is titled Diagnostics, and that's what you want. We'll hit the left right button to bring it up and scroll down until we get to a third item called Sensor Input. There we go. Press the left right button again, and you're set to go. Let's start off by putting the probe in pH 7 buffer solution as we've done. Well, in the perfect world, the sensor would input would be reading zero mo millivolts. Difference in the process and reference electrodes, however, will ensure that it will never be exactly zero. Any reading between minus 50 and plus 50 millivolts is satisfactory and is called the offset. The important point is that we want to know the difference in output between pH readings, not the out absolute output voltages. In this case, we're getting a reading of minus 16 millivolts, which is very good. So the next step is to take the probe out of the pH 7 buffer, swirl it in around in the, in the rinse, and put it in pH 4, or if you're working on the caustic side of the pH scale, pH 10. After at least 30 seconds, the millivolt output will settle down for reading. The shark gives us a reading of 151 millivolts. If we subtract 151 from minus 16, we get 177. We divide that by, well, 177, I think we got lucky, and we've got 100% efficiency. This is exactly what the calibration routine does. We could have calibrated the probe and saved ourselves a lot of time. However, by doing this exercise, we can see exactly how the probe behaves. If your probe's efficiency does fall below 80%, Chances are you can bring it back with one or more of the following simple steps. One, the main cause of diminishing efficiency is contamination of the pH 7 reference solution. 
Well, the beauty of the Occometrix differential probe is that changing the solution is as simple as unscrewing the salt bridge right here, pouring out the old reference solution, and pouring in fresh solution. Check the efficiency of the probe either through the diagnostic or by calibrating it again. If it returns to its former glory, you're all set. Or number two, many people change the salt bridge when they change the reference solution. While this is good preventative medicine and certainly adds to our bottom line, it is unlikely to cure a low efficiency probe. A clogged salt bridge will simply increase the response time of the probe. You should be changing it at least once a year and not every time you change the reference solution. As with changing the reference solution, when you do so, you should check the efficiency of the probe before and after checking the reference solution. Three, if the process electrode has been allowed to dry out, then it will need to be rehydrated. If the electrode has been left dry for less than a day, then a soak in pH 7 solution for a few hours will, will do the trick. If the electrode has been left out to dry longer than a day, then a weak acid soak will likely do the job. A 0.1 normal solution of hydrochloric acid is typically specified, but quite frankly, good old white vinegar will do just about as well. Four, if the probe has accumulated a film, other organic matter, or scaling, then brushing the electrode with a soft toothbrush and detergent followed by a, weak, a soak in weak acid will clean it up. I can't caution you strongly enough. You can very easily crack the thin glass of the process electrode. And if you do, your probe is a goner, so be careful when you clean. If you are in the position of frequently cleaning your probe, you probably want to order one with either a hardened glass or flat face electrode next time. But what to do if the efficiency of the probe is well below 80%? Well, there are two possible answers. One, if the efficiency is seriously impaired, you are likely to observe that auto calibration fails. That is where running diagnostics is so valuable. You can see exactly what the probe is doing. Manual calibration is the third option for dealing with very sick probes. If the probe outputs a voltage that increases when you change buffers to a lower pH value, or vice versa, then you do indeed have a sick probe that you can probably restore to health. Just go through the steps we just covered and see if you can make your probe well again. Two. On the other hand, if you go from one buffer to another and you see no change in output or you see a voltage change opposite to what you expect, I regret to inform you that your probe has gone to the probe farm in the sky. Before you toss it, I suggest one final look at the wiring to make sure you connected it properly. Even I have been guilty of wiring a probe incorrectly. That's it. You have now graduated and are a PH probe expert at least in the eyes of most users. You are ready to graduate to ORP sensors, which I'll cover in the next video. If you have any questions at all, just call your distributor or us at 978-749-9949. Thanks for watching.